Hi, and welcome back to Reading Tea Leaves. I am John Ross, and this is where I take your stock and I run it through my brew of technical sentiment and macroeconomic tea leaves to let you know what I think of the stock and where I think it's headed. I also use this as a chance to share with you a little bit about my morning routine and my work day, and that is the type of tea that I'm drinking. So I wanna go ahead and thank uh, Joe for sending in today's stock suggestion and, and Lawrence to, uh, for letting us know what type of tea that he is drinking. So uh, before I get into the, today's stock and today's tea, I wanna just remind you that if you like um, what you see here in reading tea leaves and you wanna get more of it, hit that subscribe button to be sure when you come back to YouTube, you can find this channel and this content, or you can hit that notification bell that'll notify you every time we publish new content to this channel. And of course, drop us a comment below, a question, uh, a stock that you'd like us to run through the tea leaves, just to let us know what you think about all this. So we appreciate all the feedback that we're getting. And uh, so let me, let me just tell you that today's stock is um, OPK, which is Opka Health Incorporated. And uh, it's, part of its business is really on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so I wanted to get to a, a real breakdown of the uh, chart analysis of Opco. Uh, but before I do that, let me just tell you that Lawrence uh, told us he was drinking dandelion tea that he made in his backyard. Uh, sometimes he just uses the flower, sometimes with the flower and the leaves. Uh, he says it's a little bitter, uh, but the health benefits are better than any other tea you can name. Now, I can't personally speak to dandelion tea, how it tastes or its benefits, um, but I'll take your word for it, Lawrence. Uh, your comment reminded me of a book I read called Natural Born Heroes, uh, which documented um, the journey uh, and the challenges that people on the island of Crete had to undergo when they were invaded by Nazi Germany in World War II. Uh, basically, they were scattered into the, into the mountains and hills uh, and really rugged terrain of the island. And um, just to escape the invasion of uh, Nazi German forces, but also uh, they had to make their way throughout towns and villages to get word out uh, to others that, of the invasion, but not only that, to kind of formulate and carry around a plan of how uh, the citizens of the island, uh, how the Cretans would come together uh, to drive back the invading forces. Uh, and they would eventually prove successful. And it was really amazing how the author kind of walked through the history, but also wove in um, kind of how amazing our bodies are and how they were designed to, to be able to accomplish such um, challenging feats, but also how um, they process nutrients and things. And one of the things that the Cretans had to do to survive was to forage for food um, as they went through these remote parts of the island uh, as they're being pursued by enemy forces. Uh, so one of the ways they would, they would find these nutrients was through weeds and different wild um, plants and things that contained all kinds of crazy amounts of nutrients. And so I thought of that when, when you, Lawrence, re uh, mentioned the dandelion tea. I don't grow dandelion in my yard, but I do grow a tree called Moringa, and Moringa is considered a superfood. You can pretty much eat any part of the tree, the, the leaves, the stems, the flowers, the seeds, the seed oil, even the roots, and uh, it's full of nutrients. It's full of uh, uh, polyphenols, antioxidants, and things, and so kind of makes it, gives it the health benefits of a green tea, probably shares some characteristics, uh, some health benefits as dandelion tea, um, but I think it's a, a really good tea. Really, uh, it's, it, it brews fast. It has a bit of a spiciness to it, kind of like a, a radish, not like a hot pepper, um, and it has kind of a nuttiness to it as well. And it reminds me a little bit of uh, alfalfa. Uh, if you've been around horses and, and horse hay, you know that alfalfa hay is a really strong, unique um, kind of smell. Uh, so it smells a little bit like that Moringa tea. We harvested the leaves from the trees in our, on our property, uh, dried them out ourselves and uh, makes a really nice, easy tea to drink. So uh, not just a tea, of course, a, a supplement to your diet, um, additive for your foods and things. Um, but thank you, Lawrence, for uh, kind of triggering that and inspiring the tea that I'm drinking this morning. So cheers. Now, Let's get uh, to today's stock, Opco Health. This is a daily chart of Opco and really shows, uh, goes back into the end of last year. But what I really wanna look at is, is how the stock is moving uh, in the last two months. 
two to three months. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has really pushed this stock around quite a bit. Now, Opco, um, it has, it, you know, it has FDA approved drugs and it's in uh, current trials and things uh, to treat things like uh, kidney cancer, um, hypothyroidism and, and things of that nature. Um, but part of its business is in um, uh, lab testing. So it can receive specimens, uh, run the tests and send out results. It also can provide tests uh, in you know partnerships that it might have with um, state health departments and things. Uh, it currently is partnered up with the uh, health department, New York Health Department, Florida Health Department, I think New Jersey as well, maybe a couple other states, a couple other cities and things. Um, so a lot of the spotlight is really shining on Opco uh, because of its efforts in helping um, helping hospitals and, and healthcare organizations uh, turn this testing around real fast to help not just figure out what type, what type of this, the severity of the outbreak, but how we might be able to overcome it. So lots of good publicity here for Opco, uh, for, particularly for that part of its business. Uh, the company does report earnings, first quarter earnings uh, in the next week or two. And, um, you know, estimates expect some type of uh, wider loss for the company. Uh, so chances are uh, the new demand for its um, testing services is not going to be able to overcome a lot of the, the pressure of the loss in other parts of its business. Now, I'm not a healthcare expert, so I can't, I can't really speak to that uh, in too much depth, but did want to bring that to your attention. Now, with that considered, uh, in that light, let's go back to the chart. Now, I've drawn in uh, A, B, C, D, E, uh, apex movement pattern here, and that's, that's a five wave pattern, which just shows that this move is, ex this rally we've seen in April has really extended itself. It's been an 85% rally, and that comes after a, a spike higher uh, at the end of February, beginning of March, uh, broke up through its 200-day moving average, but then fell right back below it, tried to retake it, couldn't hold, and fell to new lows, at the beginning of April. Now, what should we be expecting after an 85% rally uh, in the last three weeks? Well, I think we should be expecting a pullback here. Now, to get a sense of how deep this pullback can go, uh, I think we should look at the 50-day moving average, which is the red line that runs through the, the price there of Opco, and then the 200-day moving average, which is the blue line that runs through the price. I think those will be logical retracement targets uh, so we'll see a pullback to those levels, but to kind of, you know, uh, refine it a little more, uh, hone in a little bit more, um, you can see that a 50% retracement of the, of the recent uptrend would take uh, the stock down to uh, right between uh, where the 50 and 200 day moving averages are trading. Uh, that comes into play somewhere around 170. So I think we should be looking for some type of pullback uh, in the next two months that will take Opco down to uh, around 180, which is a 15% decline, or as far as uh, I would say 170. So somewhere between 170 uh, and 180, so a 15 to 23% decline, somewhere in that neighborhood uh, to get a sense of where we might see some support levels come into play uh, for, the, for the decline that is ahead. Now, uh, at that level, at those support levels, we want to be watching um, the broader market and how that is impacting uh, shares of Opco. Uh, because back at the, um, at the beginning or, or throughout March, uh, we saw when the broad market sold off, uh, the shares of this stock really just collapsed. So they couldn't hold on despite uh, the new attention for its COVID-19 testing um, services. Uh, so if we see broad market pressure, which I'm expecting very soon, then we're likely to see that to impact shares of Opco. Want to watch how it behaves around its 200-day, uh, 50-day moving averages. Of course, natural logical um, retracement levels as well. Um, one final note on the chart, um, the RSI, the 14-day RSI, which is the relative strength index, it's running across the bottom. That has reached uh, overbought territory. So basically the, the strength... Uh, in this move is really at a point of exha exhaustion. Uh, so it's a, a logical place for, to see the stock roll over here. Now, um, if this stock pulls back like I think it will, um, maybe it'll give longer term 
investors. So investors who kind of have a broader time horizon, an opportunity to, to, to sort of buy into this stock, to park some money in Opco and look for a really uh, big lasting uptrend. Now, I don't wanna put any targets or bets or timeframes on that. Um, you know, we do want to watch, um, you know, how uh, recent demand for its services from the pandemic uh, kind of uh, buttresses the company, um, how much it can overcome, you know, maybe want to see some of the uh, some of the hopeful uh, things that are in the works come to fruition for the company, uh, its drugs and trials and things. Um, so this might be a good opportunity, a good catalyst to really kickstart uh, this stock, bring it uh, into the uh, into the spotlight, um, attract some investor attention, and uh, really s begin a longer-term uptrend. So in the short term, this is a sell uh, as far as my tea leaves tell me, um, but longer term, definitely a stock to be watching, an opportunity to really make a lot of money if Opco can really find its groove. So. With all that said, I uh, just want to thank you so much for watching. Remind you, hit the subscribe button or the notification bell. Drop us a comment. Leave us a question. Um, you know, this works based on what you guys want to hear from us. So already received a lot of great feedback. Definitely taking it into consideration. And we'll continue to just mold and craft this for you. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, have a great day and we'll talk soon.